If you would please stand. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the prophet Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning, rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from public punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, Call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as we read a portion of Psalm 103, beginning with the eighth verse through the 14th. We will read it in unison. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. For he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated for a reading from Paul's letter, letter to the church in Corinth. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, 
he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, uh, purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and not yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, Go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may, not, may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. The prophet Joel probably reads a little different this year, given our geopolitical realities than Ash Wednesday's previous.
the doom of a relentless army marching upon the people. And the people are frustrated with themselves. And Joel seems frustrated with them as well. And then Joel enjoins them. Even now, even now, return to the Lord. And there's a reason to return to the Lord. The Lord is gracious and kind, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents of evil. That's why we turn to the Lord. Because that's who the Lord is. Some version of that formula, and we got it twice tonight, right? We got it in Joel, we got it in the Psalm. Some version of that formula is found throughout Hebrew Scripture. You find it in Isaiah. You find it in Jeremiah. You find it in Daniel, the most apocalyptic of the prophets. You find it in Proverbs, you find it a few times in the Psalms, some version of that formula. Is that your experience of God? Is that the experience of God that the people of Ukraine are experiencing? Is that the way the poor in this country? Is that the way people of a different skin color in this country experience God? Is that the way the LBGTQ community gets treated? Is that how they experience God? It's a funny thing because though that formula is littered throughout Hebrew scripture most of the time our relationship with God really doesn't deal with it doesn't live trusting in that formula that that's who God is gracious and kind slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love steadfast love it's funny, the Hebrew word is difficult to render in English. It's hesed. And it gets rendered in a few different ways. Steadfast love is one. Loving kindness is another. Faithfulness is another. It gets rendered in a lot of different ways. And it is never applied to us. Only. And I worry, and worry is the right word. I worry that that loving kindness, that steadfast love, is not what we experience in our relationship with God. I worry that it is not what we experience in our relationship with one another. I worry that it's not what we experience when the world looks the way it does this past week. I worry that that's not our experience of God after we've hit two full years of having to pivot seemingly every other week just to worship together. I worry that our experience of God is not that beautiful formula it's been said over and over and over and over again, and written down over and over and over again for millennia. So maybe Lent is hitting at the exact right time. Maybe Lent is what the world needs after 
two, two and a half years of pandemic, after war being waged in Eastern Europe, after microaggressions all throughout Africa and Central and South America, and the depravities that we still inflict upon others here in our own country from our positions of privilege and benefit. Maybe Lent is coming right when we need it the most. Because Lent is all about God creating, and there's that funny little thing from the colic, God creating within us new and contrite hearts. I don't know how many of y'all have any background with the Roman Catholic Church um, or what the rite of reconciliation looked like prior, the rite of reconciliation, that's confession. Did y'all know that? Like in the Episcopal Church, we have confession. If you, if you want to do confession, just call me. You sit down and do confession. It's actually good for you. Before the 1979 prayer book, we had a little thing. And it's a funny kind of prayer. It's called an act of contrition. Contrition comes from a word that means to crush. We ask God to crush us under the weight of our sorrow. We were to feel sorrow for our sins and be broken hearted by it. When was the last time you were broken hearted over your sins? Ever been broken hearted over your sins or have you just always had your hand patted and told you everything's gonna be fine? Maybe this year, can accept God making in us new hearts that are at least a little broken under the weight of our sorrow, under the weight of our sin. And maybe our new contrition, maybe our new heartbreak will make us more capable more capable of love and generosity, more faithful, more compassionate, more generous, more empathetic, more hopeful, braver. Maybe Lent is coming at the exact right time. Because after two and a half years of pandemic, after war and microaggressions, after all manner of prejudices, maybe we deserve to be a little broken hearted and made brand new. And made brand new. Which is the whole point of Lent. The whole point of Lent is not, whew, I get to midnight Saturday night, now it's Sunday, and all Sundays are feasts of the resurrection, so I can eat chocolate for the next 24 hours, and then I give it up for the rest of the week. It's not the point of Lent. The point of Lent is that whatever we take on, or whatever we give up, is supposed to remind us that God is always trying to New hearts. New hearts that are at least a little broken with the sorrow and the sins of the world. So that when we get to those first alleluias of Easter, something about us will be utterly transformed. We won't be the same as we are something else. I don't know what that is. Nor do you. One of the wonderful things about living in the mystery of God, participating in the work 
that God is doing. The work of creation and redemption that is always ongoing. What I hope is whatever the brand new thing you are is, is that he or she will be more ready, more willing, more hopeful in participating in God's creating and redeeming work. We turn to the Lord this night and every other time we ever have the guts to do it because of who God is. God is gracious, God is kind, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast. If you would please stand as you are able. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. The season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel before the Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. For those who wish to receive the imposition of ashes, I invite you to come forward at this time. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. 
Remember that you were dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you were dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember you were dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you were dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you were dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you were dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you were dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you were dust, and to dust you shall return. Mm -hmm. Remember that you were dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you were dust, and to dust you shall return. Mm -hmm. Remember that you were dust, and to dust you shall return. Kneeling, please join with me in the recitation of Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my defenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Wash me and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving health again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O God of my salvation, open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. We continue with the litany of penitence. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. 
We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. Our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. For your waste and pollution of your for our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please greet one another in the name of the Lord. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. We continue with Eucharistic Prayer A. It is found on page 361. If you would please stand as you are able.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
This is a prayer of spiritual communion. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you together with all your faithful people gathered around every altar of your church. And I embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Body of Christ, the bread of life. Body of Christ, the bread of life. The 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 body of Christ, the bread of life. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 body of Christ. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Our post-communion prayer is found on page 366. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these little ministries that we are living members of the body of your Christ, and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Life is short. We do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make this earthly pilgrimage with us. So be swift to love, to make haste to do kindness. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.